About two years ago, in late 2014, early 2015, I was exposed to the flat earth theory. Though at the time I was intrigued by the idea, I still thought it was impossible. I kept looking at it anyway. Some things I laughed at, some things made me think to myself, hmm, that actually makes sense. So from January 2015 to October 2015, it became an everyday thing for me to wake up, get my coffee, and then sit down and look at the Flat Earth Theory. At least that's what I used to call it, Flat Earth Theory. After 10 months of examining the information available and also figuring out other things on my own, it became quite clear that the Flat Earth is the truth. Do we know the exact layout of the Flat Earth? No. But I still believe that the Gleason's map is possibly the real deal, but I'm not certain. One thing I know for sure is that no one has debunked it. It's only been denied by people who can't adequately show why it doesn't work. To me, it makes sense that Gleason's map is accurate because it easily converts into the globe model. And that's how this deception started. They just turned the accurate flat map into a globe and said, this is where you live. And many people say the Gleason's map is just a flat representation of the globe which is wrong. If you look at the bottom corners of the map, it clearly states that the sun moves in circles around the tropics, meaning that the creator of the map knew that the earth didn't move. But also, Alexander Gleason wrote a book called Is the Bible from Heaven? Is the Earth a Globe? And you can easily see for yourself in the book that he is a flat earther. Now the thing is that his map wasn't released until 1892, but the Flat Earth map, now called the Azimuthal Equidistant map, has been around since about the year 1000, possibly earlier. That's older than the oldest known globe on Earth which comes from 1492. And that's actually around the time that this whole deception started. It was during the lifetime of Copernicus and around the time of the creation of the Jesuits. We don't know all the exact details because we know that history has been rewritten time and time again to benefit those who have put themselves in charge. But if you are honest with yourself, you can see clearly that this heliocentric globe earth deception began around 500 years ago. Anyway, back to the maps. Let's just say for a minute that flat earthers don't have a good map. Well, either do globe earthers. Check this out. How many of you have ever seen a map that looked like this before? How many of you have ever seen this map? Seen that map? Yeah. Isn't this the map that you use K through 16 in the United States of America? Now, folks, look at this map. According to your, so, to your social studies teacher, what is the equator? Right An imaginary there, line where? Yeah. Around the center of the Earth. Then if this map is correct, then the equator must be here and Chicago has a tropical climate. Now, folks, this is the map that we use in the schools. Look where the United States is in the middle of the world, right? Now, here's the USSR, which is no more, of course, Mongolia, China, Africa, uh, India, Pakistan, Afghanistan. Now, look over here. USSR, Mongolia, China, India, Pakistan, Afghanistan. Twindy is here. We have two Indias. Did you know that? Now, people, this is a flat-out lie. Look at the size of Greenland and the size of South America. According to your social studies teachers, what were continents? <coughs> Largest land masses on the face of the earth, right? Now, do you know the continents? Africa, Asia, Australia, Antarctica, Europe, North America, and South America. Did I say Greenland? No. Well, Greenland isn't a continent, but it's a huge land mass according to this map, right? The map is a flat out lie, people. If you read the legend on the map, here it says, in fact, South America is actually nine times larger than Greenland. Are you saying the map is wrong? Oh dear, yes. Uh, look at Greenland. Okay. Now look at Africa. Okay. The two land masses appear to be roughly the same size. Yes. Would it blow your mind if I told you that Africa is in reality 14 times larger? Yes. Here we have Europe drawn considerably larger than South America when it's 6.9 million square miles, South America is almost double the size of Europe's 3.8 million. Alaska appears three times as large as Mexico when Mexico is larger by 0.1 million square miles. Germany appears in the middle of the map when it's in the northernmost quarter of the Earth. Wait, wait, relative size is one thing, but you're telling me that Germany isn't where we think it is? Nothing is where you think it is. 
Where is it? I'm glad you asked. Not only things like that, but NASA can't even make the same layout twice for some reason. Notice in these official NASA images that the layout of the Earth is never the same. In 2002, North America is this size. In 2012, it's this size. And in 2015, it's yet again a totally different size than both of those. But the fact of the matter is, none of these pictures are real anyway. NASA employee Rob Simmon has gone on record saying that the Earth is photoshopped because it has to be. It is photoshopped, but it's it's has to be. There's artistry to creating the world. What I imagine it to be. Um, unfortunately, I'm not an astronaut. <laughs> I've never been to space. Now, why don't we have any pictures of the Earth? It's 2017, and you think this is normal? Maybe because we can't leave the Earth, just like in the Flat Earth model, which has a sky barrier known as the firmament or the dome? NASA tries to be clever and say that we can't leave the Earth due to the Van Allen radiation belt. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go. And this new system that we're building is going to allow us to go beyond and hopefully take humans into the solar system to explore. So the moon, Mars, asteroids, there's a lot of destinations that we could go to. And we're building these building block components in order to allow us to do that eventually. The kinds of technologies that we're testing out on Space Station are definitely helping us with our goals of going beyond low Earth orbit. But if you're smart, you know that this is a cover for the dome. We can't leave Earth, people. I mean, Bill Nye the Science Guy even tells you this straight up. Well, one thing I really want your generation to embrace is that the Earth is a closed system. We cannot leave the Earth. One thing I really want your generation to embrace is that the Earth is a closed system. We cannot leave the Earth. And you still argue otherwise. Not that we need Bill Nye to figure this out, because we don't. He's a paid-for liar. But they put the truth out so later when it becomes too much to bear, they can just say, well, we've been telling you the whole time. But you act like you don't hear it, and you just make excuses for why they say these things, and it's ridiculous. You can observe for yourself that water does not curve. And this is funny. People will say that raindrops prove that water does curve. But have you ever seen a gallon of water in the form of a sphere? Let alone 326 quintillion gallons of water? Well, at least that's how much water they tell us is on Earth. Should we believe them? Probably not. But we do know that it's a lot of water. Either way, you've never seen any experiment show that a good amount of water can curve or take the shape of a sphere. So your raindrop argument doesn't work. If you actually take the time to look into the flat Earth and all of its angles, it becomes 100% crystal clear that we do not live on a spinning ball flying through infinite space. Some folks say that it would be impossible to be nighttime and daytime on a flat Earth at the same time. But if you actually looked, then you would know that it's completely possible. Because the sun is closer and smaller. Here's a video from an Alaskan cruise. Uh, you probably wouldn't believe this if we didn't show you. Here's out our balcony. It's about 10 o'clock at night. It's almost dark. It's amazing. You can see the moon shining and reflecting brilliantly on the water. But then as you pan to the left, daylight over here and the sunset. Look at that beauty. And it won't ever completely settle over there. It will stay light actually all night. But over here, the moon rising out of there. Day and night at the same time, just in that area alone. Of course it would be possible on a bigger scale. Now this brings me to the division that Flat Earth has caused among the so-called truth community. A lot of people that suffer heavily from cognitive dissonance say that the Flat Earth information is a psyop and it only serves to divide us and discredit those of us that see the information as correct. But this is not true. 
It's only an excuse for cowards that are scared of the information for one reason or another. Some people don't want to accept the Flat Earth because of the implications of a creator. Some people can't accept it because of the mental conditioning coming from schools and television that they have been dealing with their whole life. Whatever the reason, I can understand up to a certain extent. But if you have really dove into the Flat Earth info, and I mean really dove into it, like you let go of your preconceived notions of what the Earth is and you examined it unbiasedly, there's no way, no way that you would come back thinking that the Earth is a spinning ball. You may come to the conclusion that you honestly just don't know, or you may be 100% sure that the Earth is indeed flat, but you would never accept the heliocentric model of the universe after genuinely looking into the flat Earth for a good amount of time, which leads me to my next point about the division that flat Earth has caused, because it has caused division. What the flat Earth has done is divide the real truth seekers from the run-of-the-mill people that don't know the truth when it slaps them in the face. The flat earthers that I interact with are the most logical, down-to-earth people that I know, and they have amazing sense and excellent intuition. Don't get me wrong, there are people that are imitating flat earthers, and they pretend to be absolutely batshit crazy in order to discredit the flat earth, and there's most likely genuinely crazy people that are flat earthers. Or at least they come off as crazy, so it's not good for the flat earth cause. But that's to be expected. There's some very crazy people in this world, flat earthers or not. So anyway, what gets me is people that claim flat earth is a complete psyop and it's bullshit, like Zachary K. Hubbard for instance. The dude hates flat earth so much and thinks it's stupid that we debate the shape of the earth while it's quote unquote on fire. The flat earth theory, which has been pushed on the truth community for going on two years, is a psychological operations that has three purposes. To distract us from things that are important. For example, we live on Earth. It doesn't matter what shape Earth is. Earth is on fire. And for all of you who've made it your priority to argue what shape the Earth is while the Earth is on fire, just think about what you're doing. Why are we debating the earth why the earth is on fire, he says. Yet he has no problem making videos about what he eats for breakfast. Hey, true seekers, welcome back. Zach here. A lot of people ask me, what do I eat for breakfast? I'm a routine guy. I eat the same thing almost every single day, and this is just how I make it. I normally have oatmeal and tea for breakfast. I don't use instant oats. I use regular oats, but I make it just like this. I just pour hot water straight from the uh, teapot. Got your results back. And, uh, uh, I'm sorry, but the test was positive. You're a basic bitch. The guy has to be one of the biggest idiots on YouTube, and he has been caught lying several times. Yes, I gave him a shout in my Pizzagate video, but that's before I even started watching him. I mean, that was the, the only video I seen from him at that point was one Pizzagate video. And I thought the information was good. But his channel is about how sports are rigged. And you can tell by using Gematria on the games, dates, players, and whatnot. But he has never had it right anyway. He had the Giants and the Colts for this year's Super Bowl based on that information. And well, neither of them are even in the running anymore. But that's, that's when he picks more teams and plays like that's what he was saying the whole time. He does it all the time. Each and every time. Sorry, I'm getting a little carried away on Zach. But he's the perfect example of a fake-ass truth seeker, and he only serves as confirmation bias for others that don't want nothing to do with Flat Earth for whatever reason. And I'll give you another example. What is Real is a YouTube channel that doesn't like Flat Earth. I've spoke with him before, and he just can't accept it. He says he hates it. Here he is on one of Zachary's videos expressing how the Flat Earth makes him sick. First off, emotions don't have a place in the truth movement. Second, when anyone makes an anti-flat earth video, he's on it, ready to support. 
because it's reinforcing his belief in the spinning ball earth, which is all he wants to hear. He wants to hear what he already believes. He doesn't want to hear the truth. He doesn't want to accept the truth, not what the actual truth is. Now, people like that don't belong in the truth movement. Therefore, the division is okay by me. Flat Earth has given me good reason to pay attention to people. It's simple, really. If they are Flat Earthers, then they have the ability to overcome cognitive dissonance. Therefore, they are sincere in their pursuit of truth. Not all Flat Earthers, though, because some are obvious shills. But also, you don't have to be a Flat Earther for me to take you seriously. It's just that Flat Earthers and Ball Earth skeptics that admit they don't know have more credibility because Flat Earth is the truth. But I can't be mad at anybody who hasn't taken the time to look at Flat Earth. It's when you have looked at it and you conclude that it's bullshit is when I have a problem with someone or I stop paying attention to someone. There's no use in me wasting my time on someone that can't even admit the truth to themselves. That's how I see it. Flat Earth has been everything but proven 100%. But what do you expect? There's a 500 year and running conspiracy to hide the truth from us. It's not like it's supposed to be extremely easy to figure out. That's the whole point with truth seeking. People have covered up the truth and we are trying to uncover it. It's not supposed to be a piece of cake. So leave your ego behind if you're really about the truth. Because this is bigger than all of us. It's not about me. It's not about Eric Dubay. It's not about Jaronism. It's not about who found it first or whatnot. It's about the truth and getting it across to people in the most successful way possible. And that's it. All I want is to see people wake up and take their power back. At least take their minds back. That's where the power is. That's what they have done to us. They've taken our minds. The flat earth truth does away with all of the mind control. It does away with the bogus theory of evolution. It does away with the dinosaur deception. It does away with the lie that there are aliens out there. And though we still end up with more questions than answers, our minds are freed. And that's how real change is going to happen in this world of ours. Thanks everybody for listening. This has been ODDTV and I'm out.